listening to Science Fantastic with Professor Michio Kaku. Call Professor Kaku now at 1-800-449-8255. Welcome back to Science Fantastic with Professor Michio Kaku. In the first segment of Science Fantastic, we talked about advances in the electric car. Now, in the second half of Science Fantastic, we'll talk about nature. The whole purpose, of course, of shifting away from fossil fuels to the electric car is not only to increase efficiency, but also to save our environment. And with us today to talk about nature walks is Mark Fraser. He's a self-taught naturalist, filmmaker. You've probably seen him on Discovery News and also PBS. And uh, he regularly takes people into the forest to explain the wonders of nature. So, Mark, tell us a little bit about what you do. Uh, thank you very much, Professor. I, 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 first of all, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, basically, my goal is to get people to reconnect with the natural world. We, you know, we live in, as you know, a very high-tech environment. We have, you know, just... You know, social media has become a way of life for us, and and I feel that there's a need out there to get the kids and the people and everybody to reconnect with the environment. So, so I do a lot of different things on on YouTube or or NatureWalkWithMark.org website, trying to get folks to kind of get out, and even if they can't get to the forest themselves, give them a virtual opportunity to get out there and get that kind of skill set and just kind of bond with their natural environment. I, I I truly feel that that's the best way to get people to to actually be uh, excited about conservation is to get to know uh, the amazing species that are right in our backyard. Well, I guess it was President uh, Teddy Roosevelt who first alerted the American people of the vanishing forests and vanishing frontier and the need to conserve. So you think you're carrying on that tradition, huh? Oh, right on, and I'm, and I'm glad you brought that up. You know, well, one of the things that happens is, you know, how do we know what's missing from an environment if we don't know what the environment is supposed to look like? So if we get out to a stream, if you don't know what the native species of fauna are, then it's impossible for us to understand when there's invasive species. Or okay. Species. Now, Mark, we're going to have to take a short commercial break, but right after the break, we're going to continue with Nature Walks with Mark Fraser, conserving our environmental heritage. Once again, this is Science Fantastic with Professor Michio Kaku. Stay tuned. Did you know that there's a crab relative, a crustacean known as isopod, that actually lives right in your backyard? It's seen here. It's called the wood lice, and it's an incredible species. You're listening to Science Fantastic with Professor Michio Kaku. Have a question you need answered? Call the Science Fantastic hotline at 866-323-2538. You're listening to Science Fantastic. Welcome back to Science Fantastic with Professor Michio Kaku. Once again, in the first part of Science Fantastic, we talked about the electric car. The electric car is coming. Some people think that we're phasing out of the fossil fuel era. And the electric car era is dawning. It's not here yet, but we have some pioneers that we've interviewed on this radio show. And if you want to be ahead of the curve, you may want to find out exactly what's happening in the laboratory. And in the second half of Science Fantastic, we're going to talk about Nature Walks with Mark Fraser. You know, sometimes it's time to stop and smell the roses. After all, why are we doing this? Why are we spending all our time trying to go to the post-petroleum era? Why are we spending so much time talking about conservation, if not to appreciate the world around us? Because eventually, we are also part of the fabric of life. If we mess up our environment, it's going to eventually come back at us because we are at the top of the food chain. If you were to disturb the bottom of the food chain, it's only a matter of time before the, the change ripples to the top, and it wouldn't take that much to topple us from being the top of the food chain. So once again, our special guest now is Mark Fraser. You've probably seen him on Discovery News and also PBS. He produces uh, films that you can see on TV about the glories of Mother Nature. So Mark, how did you first get into doing these nature walks and doing these little video uh, clips for the media? 
Great. Well, I, actually, I started by, you know, I, I've spent my life exploring the natural world. It's been a, a passion of mine since I was a child. My my father and grandfather actually lived in the Adirondacks during the Great Depression, uh, Great Depression in the forest. And I learned a lot of that from, from my father. And, you know, and, and I see a lack of that today. So I started uh, hosting public nature walks. I would take people out, you know, I wouldn't charge anything, of course, and, and just kind of Give, give folks the opportunity, including inner city kids, to, to get out into the forest and look at the different plants, faunas, insects, birds, mammals that are out there and just kind of try to excite people to that fascination. Um, and inevitably it led to, you know, there was, there was folks that came out on the nature walks that were elderly and whatnot, and, and they had mentioned that they, they'd like to see that, but they can't really get out there sometimes, which kind of spawned the concept of, hey, if I bring a camera with me, I could film that and then be able to share that to a wider audience, and it's just kind of taken off from there. Okay, well, Mark, I'm on your side, but let me play devil's advocate. You probably get this question thrown at you many times a day. Some people say, well, hey, why should I care? I mean, there's a recession going on. People are being thrown out of work. They're counting pennies right now. They're spending hours on the unemployment line. And you're telling me that we should care about spotted owls and, and uh, salmon? I mean, give me a break. Uh, look, look, look at all the problems that we have. We have problems in the economy, international relations, uh, at home. And you're telling me that we should care about squirrels? Well, what do you tell these people? Well, you know, and I'm glad you brought that up because you're right, and a lot of people do think like that. But, you know, let's face it. We, we had great video of the surface of Mars before we had video of a giant squid on our own planet. There is an amazing world with countless species that lives all around us that we hardly even know. And people protect what they know and understand and what they care about. That's really what it's all about. When we talk about economy, you know, we have over 6.8 billion people on this planet, you know, and it's growing all the time. So the resources, so the, the natural resources that are on the Earth, is not getting larger, but our populations and our demand on that resource is growing. So the only way that we're going to have a viable future and viable economy going down the road is to really start paying attention to our forest and oceans. You know, the, the, the web of life, when you think about the different species, that whether, whether they're in the, the land, in the forest, or in the ocean, you know, we're a part of that web. We're directly related. We can't live without bees and pollinators. We can't live without seafood. We can't, there's so many independencies that, that we, you know, so we're a part of that branch. The, the entire world really is interconnected. And, and the thing is, our behavior as a society is culturally taught. You know, a, a, a cannibal or a person today is really genetically, they're no different. It's a cultural thing, you know, those, those kind of ethics and teaching that we teach each other. So if we teach each other to care about the environment, then we're going to have a long-term future as a species ourselves on this planet. We just need to learn that niche, that symbiosis that you see all over ecology. So you're telling me that if we mess up the environment, if we destroy the spotted owl and the salmon, if we destroy the environment around us, because all we care about is our neighborhood, that what you're saying is we're committing suicide. Right on, 100%. There cannot be a future without the natural world. I mean, let's face it, we're of the natural world. We sit on this planet. What happens to it happens to us. That's the way it is. And sometimes those interdependencies are, are so far down the line and so convoluted that very few people understand that when you change the pH of the soil, how it affects the trees and then the things that eat those and then the meat eaters that eat those. Or when you reintroduce wolves and all of a sudden the ungulates like elk don't stand and graze on the plants too much so certain species of trees are finally allowed to grow again. So when we change our environment, when we take a species out of the environment, there's a ripple effect that sometimes we don't see for decades, but the ramifications can be enormous. And, you know, let's face it, Mother Earth, she's been around billions of years, so she knows. We, are, we aren't the, the teachers here. We're the students. Now, uh, we have to close this segment, but let me point out that we are at the top of the food chain. We are king of the mountains, but if you ever play king of the mountains as a kid, you know that it doesn't take much to topple the king to create a new king of the mountain. And it wouldn't take much to topple us from being the top of the food chain. Well, thank you, Mark, for being on Science Fantastic. 
It's an honor. Thank you very much. Right. Once again, this is Science Fantastic with Professor Michio Kaku. Our guest was Mark Fraser, who does many Discovery News shorts and also videos on PBS and other national TV outlets. So stay tuned as we continue to go to the very edge of science as we look for the impact of science on our lives. Stay tuned. This is Science Fantastic.